Oh boy, I got a new base. <laughs> anyway, this just came into my life. It is a brand new Fender <clears throat> 1963 uh, custom shop uh, journeyman. And I've never had a journeyman before. It basically is a level of wear and damage that uh, Fender puts on it. Uh, this, you know, basically has some checking in the uh, nitrocellulose lacquer. Has some wear and some rust on the hardware. Uh, a few little chips, uh, very minor, throughout the instrument. And, uh, you know, the normal neck wear. Look at that. Flame maple neck. Anyway, <clears throat> this instrument... Kind of made me nervous uh, because it was a 63 and in 63 they you know were using the laminate or round laminate fingerboard uh, is what they call it today um, instead of the slab board i've always been a fan of slab boards you know from my other videos that that's the way i prefer to go uh, but because this was a 63 and uh, this is my birth year and it was Daphne Blue, faded Daphne Blue, and, and I just kind of was enamored by it. Uh, I figured I'd give it a try, if nothing else, just to compare a laminate board to uh, slab boards from the custom shop. And I am happy to say that it has passed every test. <laughs> across the board no dead spots uh, none of the problems I was worried about um, yeah maybe it has slightly less resonance than a uh, slab board but uh, not really a problem um, and as far as the truss rod working that was my other concern is that uh, the slab boards seem to keep the, the neck more stable they help the truss rod. They also give it a harder, firmer surface to uh, push against uh, so that they, they work more effectively. Uh, I can guarantee you on those early ones, uh, the truss rods were a problem. I've had them and I, I just don't go there anymore. But I decided to try the custom shop, see what it would do. And so far it's great. <clears throat> now, as far as the base goes, uh, they've stayed fairly uh, consistent in the time period. The neck carve is different than on a 62 or a 61, 60. Uh, I'm sure at the factory something changed at that point. Um, in 60, late 62, maybe 63, uh, they must have added a different carver or something. I know there was a guy at the factory from like the late 50s through 62 that carved very consistently and they were excellent um, They were thinner and Just had an amazing feel this one. They've stayed with the 63 Formula and they've made it a little chunkier Feels a little wider at the nut even though it's probably not uh, It just feels that way and then uh, you can see too they started to in 63 whoever was carving started to move his carve up into the headstock a little bit. And uh, that's, that seems to be a, uh, uh, a hallmark of the 63s. Anyway, um, as far as the base goes, I was uh, you know, wanting to try it with a fresh set of strings on it, stuff I knew, lighter gauge. And I had a, a client give me a set of Tomastics, uh, the jazz uh, round ones, in the lighter gauge. And I thought, okay, well, we'll give these a try. And I have never been so concerned in my life. As soon as I put them on, everything was wrong on the bass. The, the A string was at low volume and sounded dead. The E string was acceptable but not great. The D string was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. And it completely changed everything. It, the volume was so loud on it. And then the, the G string was low volume. And when I went to pluck, it was.
was like that, and then the G string was like that, you know? So it, it was so crazy. Um, I don't really have anything against Tomastic uh, other than they better get their act together on those strings because I've never played a worse set in my entire lifetime. It was ridiculously bad. Anyway, um, I put a set of uh, Dodario Pro Steels on it, which is what I normally use, and uh, it completely changed the instrument. It, it was perfect from then on. The consistency of those strings really helps me to evaluate uh, different instruments uh, as I uh, either get them in for me or in for stock. And uh, uh, it, it just made the bass perfect. So sometimes if you're testing out a bass and you've got a, a set of strings, maybe try a second set just to see if it changes things if you're not happy with the bass uh, in the first uh, stringing because uh, it can be a set of strings that completely turns you off to something. Anyway, um, this bass, it's got good resonance. Great string volume balance. Um, you know, I'm very happy that everywhere on the neck is, is solid. are probably wondering why I do so much slap playing on my uh, bass evaluations and uh, it's not that I I mean I'm known for slap playing but it's not that I do that on every gig all the time uh, you know I played Blue, Bly Blue Bayou on this the other night so <clears throat> you know it it's it's a technique that pushes the bass to its limits I want to be able to know what that bass is capable of and if i just played pizzicato all night with the tone rolled off you know a lot of guys get through their entire lives doing that um you know if you're playing a blues gig and you're not really uh you know varying much through the night if you're playing a classic rock gig where you want to sound like an old you know dead stringed instrument from the the 70s fine but if you really want to know what that bass is able to do you want to be able to push the uh the uh parameters of you know what the strings doing on the bass and see what the resonance is see what the clarity is and uh, whether there's a balance on each of the strings on volume and the best way to do that is through slap playing it just uh, it gives me the best feedback so I can hear what the instrument is doing and then uh, be able to you know know whether it's a wide ranging instrument for all styles or whether it's going to be doomed to you know a set of flat wounds and uh tone rolled off so uh i prefer a bass that can do everything and this bass proved it the other night on a gig i was in a a venue that i have struggled with for years it's always been a problem and uh this bass handled it beautifully it was audible to me it was audible to the audience it was audible to the the other in uh in, you know musicians on stage uh looked over at the keyboard player and he was just you know grooving to what i was doing he knew i he could hear it i could hear it and uh it, it really changed things so uh this is the base for that venue at least um but anyway it's uh it's a, you know, a solid instrument. They've stuck to the, uh, you know, to the, the true design of a, a 63. And Fender did a good job with it. I've always loved Daphne Blue. And, uh, you know, as far as 
uh, P bases go, you know, they're kind of one trick ponies, but if it can do the clarity and sustain, then I know it's good for virtually any style music I'm going to play that night. I can always roll off tone, but I can't create resonance and clarity. And uh, I think uh, they've done a pretty good job. I know it doesn't sound exactly like my early 60s and 61s, 59 P basses, the real deals. Uh, but they've done a pretty good job. They're getting closer every year to capturing that sound. And, uh, you know, I can guarantee you this neck works a lot better than an actual 63 or 64. Good job, Fender.